vaccine, would that be worth a $1.4 million apartment in Hong Kong? If you lived in West Virginia, you want a new hunting rifle? Well, what if we gave you one for getting a vaccine? Maybe a million and a half dollars if you're a Californian. Those are all possibilities right now as we are in the incentive mode. Joining us on the Disk Institute of Pittsburgh Newsline right now is our guest, Paul Siegert. Mr. Siegert is a managing partner of PCS Advisors. He is in the healthcare benefits sector, and he is kind enough to join us right now on KDKA. Paul, it's great to have you here. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me. It just seems that everybody's trying to one-up the next in terms of what is that incentive. Neighboring Ohio said what we're going to do is start a pool, if you will, a lottery, that if you get a vaccine, you're eligible for a $1 million lottery prize. And if you're a student, you could get four years tuition and books all the way through college, and then it just seems to have spiraled from there. What was the genesis of all this? Where did it start? Well, you know what's happened is we have a generally vaccine-hesitant population, meaning about 30% of Americans would rather not get a vaccine pre-COVID. Then COVID came, and this vaccine was produced really quickly. Uh, Not that that in and of itself is a bad thing. I think it's pretty impressive what was accomplished. But there's been such inconsistent and bad messaging. I think we've created our own challenge. You had political figures and others on on one side saying, this is being rushed, I won't take it, and then months later they're on TV getting a shot in the arm saying, this is the best thing and you should do it. So, you know, naturally you're going to add to some hesitancy there, I think. And that certainly has happened, and it's kind of split along various demographic lines. But we've we've gotten it down through some very strong media effort uh, through the mainstream media down to, say, 20 25% of folks that say they won't get vaccinated and i don't know that these i don't have a lot of uh optimism that all these lotteries and so on are going to get that last 20 25 percent across the finish line is this a matter of what's going on as a government incentive or is this going on as a business incentive meaning who's driving it who is driving these lotteries these giveaways and things like that well these these, part of the recent legislation these states have gotten funds and now they've got money to burn in a sense uh, because nobody's showing up so they and they've got money left over in this budget to deal with this pandemic so they're they're able to use it in some pretty creative ways if you're in detroit you can get a 50 dollars gift card for bringing a friend to a vaccination center with no limit you could bring 20 people and get a thousand dollars you could turn it into a, a nice little side gig so it's but and then on the other hand the big beneficiaries of this of course, are are the drug companies. Pfizer's made about $15 billion so far. We're in the midst of the biggest arms race in terms of pharmaceuticals that we've ever seen. And literally trying to get it into arms, if you will, too. Paul Siegert joining us right now, mm-hmm. managing partner, PCS Advisors, and he is involved as a consultant in the health care benefits segment. We hear about what's going on overseas, and it's not just limited to the United States. $1.4 million apartment is available in Hong Kong. <laughs> you could have a live cow if you're in Thailand. I mean, these things seem crazy to us. But at the same time, have they tried to reach out to individual demographics based on the people in their state and or country? Well, you you know, there has been outreach like that. And I think one of the big parts that we're missing in this conversation, uh, political science has driven it more than medical science, is that we're going to get to herd immunity. We were always going to get to herd immunity. It was a question of whether or not we would get there more through vaccination or more through infection, because if you get COVID and recover, you have natural immunity, which is why, uh, you know, Rand Paul was kind of getting beat up in the media lately for saying he wasn't going to get the vaccine. He has immunity. And all the studies are showing that you actually have more immunity if you get it and recover than getting the J&J vaccine, a little bit uh, smaller amount of antibodies in your system than getting an mRNA vaccine, but no more breakthrough infection, breakthrough infections are occurring amongst those who've had COVID than compared to those who've gotten the vaccine. So would, do we even need to do all this? You know, I think the the groups that are highest at risk have already gotten vaccinated. So if we had another surge in COVID cases, would that be as serious of a threat to the country and the world? No, but certainly not in this country because those uh, at-risk groups are largely now protected.
Paul, where's that money coming from? You mentioned there's a pool of money that seems to be out there that states have got money, countries have got money. It, where's it coming from? Well, we've borrowed against the future, like we've become good at doing. So that that's part of this this res- the rescue packages that have gone through. And so it's not from uh, medical companies, for instance, saying get more shots, meaning that it's not an incentive from a Pfizer or from Moderna or J and J to get people to get the shots. No, and we have we have though seen some uh, corporate actors that are non drug companies, you know, Krispy Kreme is an example, that are saying, hey, get get show us you've gotten your shot. We'll give you some free stuff, and I think that's more of a marketing effort on their part, Mm -hmm. uh, some creative marketing going on there. So in the Budweiser, for instance, the United Airlines, those kind of things, those are other just independent companies saying we want to encourage that sort of responsible citizenship, if you will, I guess, in their mind, right? Yeah, I think that's fitting into their marketing budget. Got it. Got it. So Uh, that's that's not them funding things per se then. Right. Where do you see this going next? Is this something that continues, or does this have a pretty short shelf life? Do you think? Well, I think it's gonna it's gonna die off. We're gonna get the it, it breaks it out on demographic lines, kind of in an interesting way. Who's motivated by what? Uh, liberal leaning uh, parts of the population are more motivated by uh, the lotteries and cash uh, prizes and so on and financial incentives. And those that are more conservative are, are more motivated by give me my freedom back and I'll I'll do it kind of a thing. Has it been effective? Uh, ending lockdown, I, I guess that's the, more freedom. So. Yeah, right. I guess the final question is, has it worked? Well, we haven't seen – it hadn't seemed to be closing the gap so far. Uh, we'll see. But I think those that are really convinced that they don't need it are – they're not going to do it for the chance to win a million dollars. Got it. And the likelihood of winning a million dollars, obviously, still is one, for instance, each week in the state of Ohio, or two if you include the students who could get tuition for it as well. Paul, this has been really uh, enlightening, and thank you very much for being here and breaking it down for us. Love to keep you on file and have you back for additional conversations like this in the future, okay? Let's plan on it. Thanks for having me. Paul, thank you very much. Again, his name is Paul Siegert. He's managing partner of PCS Advisors, works in the healthcare benefits sector, and breaking down for us some of these incentives that are out there. And we're going to talk about whether or not they would work for you. Do you know people who have have gotten the shot because of these sorts of things? 866-391-1020. That's how we'll talk about it right after traffic.